<laughs> right, good morning everybody. Let's make a start then. We've got, we've got the whole crew now. The whole team here. Um, so well, we've got a sort of a assignment session, a assignment review session to make sure that if you've got any questions that um, we answer them now. If there's any queries, we should hopefully help with that. Yeah. And maybe possibly look at any ideas you've got so far as well, just to see how things are going with those ideas. Uh, we've also got um, IBM coming in tomorrow, 921 B223. So it's not one of our posh labs, unfortunately. So it's going to be a bit awkward. Because all we've got is a big TV screen for the display. There's no overhead projector in there. B223. B223. It's just across in the corner. So it's going to be a bit cosy because we don't have this big screen. So it'll be huddled around the TV. Okay, we'll start, I think. First, and then we might be going to more general stuff. If there's any specific questions about the assignment spec, which I've put up, and then we'll see if that moves into other general descriptions and clarify a few other things as we go through. So, specific questions first? Yeah. Any questions first? What? Yes. Clarifications. If it can be justified to use another product other than Bluemix. No, you're using Bluemix. Using you're using Bluemix. Using Bluemix, because you've got two, <laughs> two products that you've either got the streaming stuff, yeah. like no bread, no bread, or you've got the Watson Analytics and yeah. size, so you've, which can cope with large volumes of data. I mean, you can, uh, you can use it, but for example, I've got a load of location data, and after talking to Ross, Ross said Bluemix does not provide any sort of, sort of okay. location plotting. So if there's like other services that we can use for that, but then use what's now analytics as well, okay. would that be justifiable? Yeah, if you wanted to sort of shove it into something like, well, you could either use uh, sort of the uh, web-based ones, yeah, or you could use SaaS. So if that's all right, then. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if you can make that case. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. So you can yeah. go outside to add value. Yeah. But you still need to do the primary work inside what's going on. Uh, we're inside Blue Mix. Yeah. Well, one of the bits of Blue Mix, yeah. yeah. So there are about 100 things in there yeah. in Blue Mix to do most things. Richard, is there something specific you're looking for with this presentation, or is it literally just going off what we wrote in the assignment? Well, the assignment is the assignment, and can feed, if you want it to, you feed through into this little project. Uh, but the, the project itself is sourcing data, putting it into one of these products, and then um, doing some analytics on it somehow or other, and coming up with some interesting answers to the interesting questions you found in that data. <coughs> but the important point then at the presentation is that you are basically doing a critical reflection of the project. I mean, so overall, it's a what went well and why, and what didn't go so well and why. But overlaid upon that are the um, these bits here. Now, why did you um, come up with that project? What led you to that particular set of data and that particular way of analyzing it? Um, and, you know, in a sense, what was the requirement spec you gave yourself, knowing what the data was and the type of question, how did you put together the, the logical flow of the bits and pieces you're using to come up with those, the answers? And then a little bit of a reflection on, a critical reflection on how you designed it, how you developed it, put it together, um, and made it all work. So and there's then, a fair amount of freedom, it, oh, as long as we're analysing some kind of big data and showing results as a you know, product to that. Yeah, in so terms of the technical challenge, which is <coughs> this bit here, this bit and the next bullet down there tells you what you need to achieve with your, what we call an artefact, that is the collection of programmes and data and so on. Um, which means you've got to find an open source of data, and there are millions of sources out there that are really quite interesting. From that, an initial look at the data, the raw data, should help you to identify a really fun, interesting, valuable project, a problem that needs um, some answers. 
And so then from that, you then have to write out a sort of back of fag packet type of spec that just shows how you're moving through from the data to what sort of cleaning up of the data you might need, how you're going to analyze it, the type of analytics you're going to use, how you're going to present it and visualize it, um, which is that bit. You might need to do some of that. You might need to bolt different pieces of data, to, uh, data sources together to get a really interesting sort of sort, uh, set of information to, to play with. And then you do that. And if you feel you need to add on to Bluemix with other products, whether you want to use R or SAS or uh, some of the web-based ones, um, you, know, you could use ClickView, you could use, um, what else is there that could bolt onto it? Well, there's a various web-based ones that are free to use. But I want you to get some valuable insights. It's going to be good for you know, using the data kind principles, using the data for humanity principles. But you do that. Now, that's a sort of a real project you will be given if you're going into the analytics space in business. And it will be almost as vague as that. So marketing will do... The sort of, perhaps we'll do the sort of thing they said with um, Target. We would like you to see if you can identify pregnant women from the testing <coughs> data. Yeah. And so the analytics team just went off. That was, the, that was the whole spec. And then they went off and thought, where do we get data from? Part one. How do we mix it together, join it up, add it together? <coughs> sort of the... Uh, little stage up there, if we just make it a little bit smaller. Yeah. Now, they, so they had, the analytics team in Target had to do that. Um, they then, and they also had to do something like that to say, well, where, what data have we got? Well, we know the transactional data attached to all of our customers. We know their uh, credit card details and financial details, and we know their names, their addresses, obviously. Oh, and we can probably go and buy some data from here, or we've already got it coming in from outside. We can put it all together, and then let's see what happens. <coughs> and from that, they did some an analysis, and suddenly discovered, gosh, not only can we identify pregnant women, but we can identify which, which of the three sections of the pregnancy there, which trimester. And by golly, we can even identify within about two weeks span when the, kid, the baby's due to be delivered. Wow. And so, very broad sort of present um, spec like that. Fairly nebulous, fairly fluffy. And then, when the analytics team had finished their work <coughs> on that, a few months later, they would have gone back to the marketing team with a presentation very much like this. Hey guys, you gave us this problem. This is how we addressed it, so you can be sure that we've done it in a sensible and, and credible way. <coughs> yeah, we, so this was a requirement spec broadly, which we've interpreted this way. We then put it together like this, and that would have been, to the marketing people, a little bit boring. But to the IT team, the head of the chief information officer, that would give him credibility that this was a, not a flawed tool, but was a credible tool that was going to work properly. And then this one, this third section, is where they would have then talked to both the CIO sort of guy and the chief marketing officer and the marketing team, saying, right, okay, guys, yeah, we did have some problem chief information officer, that these are one or two of the technical issues which we had to solve, and which we solved like this, and it, we know that it works because we got some test data or we got some test use cases and scenarios to prove that it worked. And hey guys, these are the answers you were really wanting. Yes, we can identify pregnant women. Yes, we can identify when the baby's due. We can therefore I help you to know what sort of marketing to put out trimester one, trimester two, trimester three. And then the bit that they forgot to think about was the do no harm, don't, make, put, don't screw the company up because you started behaving unethically or because you're making the customers feel, feel there's a creepy thing going on. So that's why that one's there, is to provide that over, overriding factor. Yeah, we've done all of this, it's great. And by the way, 
we're still ethical. We're meeting rules of good governance and principles of good governance and so on. So, you, and you might want to, you, as you go through here, you might want screenshots, maybe the raw data or screenshots of how your little uh, modules are working and so on. Um, and these technical bits here and there are so that you, know, you can demonstrate to your audience that you actually have technical mastery of the products you're using. And if I think that back to those two brains, or two half brains in the um, Tech Partners uh, picture, of the technical skills on one side, the things you've got to have, otherwise you're not employable, the things that you are assumed to have, then what we're using, you're using here, is your ability to communicate the soft skills, to identify that you can identify problems, you can solve problems. That you're inquisitive because you're actually looking for something really interesting. So that's more than the target team would have done in a sense because you're starting with a marketing customer as one role and then moving on to the technical roles as well. I mean, the target team would have had to have done some sort of in being sort of demonstration of inquisitiveness as they started sourcing some of the data, find out where could they get the data. But you're doing the whole lot, you're being inquisitive. Um, and then you've got sort of, you might be collaborating because you're going to share ideas with each other. Oh, well, what, this bit really works with me, how about you? And, you know, you're welcome to share your ideas between each other, with each other. Um, <coughs> so that's a collaboration side. Then, of course, there's critical thinking all the way through, because this is a critical reflection, so you're demonstrating your critical thinking capabilities as you develop the project and as you develop your presentation. And we see in the interviews with businesses time and time again, they want demonstrations of critical thinking. Critical thinking is turning up more and more in businessmen's um, discussions these days. Every time I talk to people out there, critical thinking comes up once, twice, or more in a presentation or in a conference. And then, communicating. You're putting together this story of what you've done, why you did it, how it went, why it didn't went well, or why it didn't go so well, and then what you need to do better, and why it didn't go so well. And then you're telling the story. Because storytelling is one of the most forgotten things these days. You need to be able to hold in your head the whole of that presentation so that you know how you're getting from the beginning point and telling the story in your own words that connect with your audience. So you have to think who's your audience and what sort of words are you interested in, what's their vocabulary, what are they really interested in, in terms of understanding how you got there. And again, it's fascinating, since I've been thinking about this or seen this um, presentation from Tech Partners in SAS, the word storytelling is becoming more and more used at the moment in business and across a whole range. It's not just in the sort of the, the um, journalists who are talking about storytelling, as you, which you would expect, but it's the actual business people that are saying, we don't have people around us who can tell the story. So that's why we, I've set it like that. Because this, and this will lead it for most of you into next term when we do Enterprise Systems and I, ISA, the same sort of thing, but again, it'll be done differently. Aimed again at telling a story that connects with your audience, whether it's them out there, or whether it's the marketing team, or the sales team, or the finance team, or the manufacturing and production engineers team. You need to understand what their language is, what their interests are, so you can tell the story in their language. Very much like you saw with that presentation that um, Dennis showed, was it last week or week before? I forget which one. Um, storytelling last week. Storytelling last week. It's that same, same idea that we want, they want stories to be told effectively. Don't just give them the data and leave them. You are doing the analysis. You are doing the thinking. You're doing the visualizations. You're choosing the visualizations which actually help the audience to home in very, very quickly on what it is you're trying to communicate. 
but it helps them to understand the story that you're trying to tell. Otherwise, it'll be, oh, that's interesting, move on to the next stage. Because you want people to actually do something when you've done a piece of work like this. And so even at the end, as part of your analytical insights, so what? Is it just interesting, or is there something valuable that can be done about it? So here, this assessment is all about you selling very, very effectively your ability to do a technical job, but then to communicate it with a so what very, very clearly identified so the audience can go and do something with it. And also, as you're doing it, you also need trying to reassure the audience that your technical skills are really way up there and that you've used the appropriate tool set, the appropriate way of anal analyzing it to come up with the very best of those insights. And then you've seen the criteria by now for assessment. And you've probably noticed that they are quite tightly linked to the skills for the information age criteria. And that means you, you probably ought to follow up the links to, to Sophia. Join, sign yourself up individually and get hold of all of those to see what it really means for you. And then hopefully you'll all be able to use it into the future uh, to help you as you develop your skills and your career. Because that's one of the things that Sophia is all about, is for you to have your own CPD environment where you can build your skills profile, build the evidence set of how you, of all the skills you've got against the many, many, many skills built into the framework. And as, you, as I've said before, Sophia is used by many uh, employers um, to identify the skills and levels of skill that they are looking for in any given job advert. So the other thing as a side issue is, you know, once you've done that, got linked into that, and you're building your CPD, perhaps start having a look at the sort of jobs you're going to be applying for to see what sort of skill sets they're asking for. Because that'll help you then focus on what you really need to develop, what skills you really need to develop, what evidence you need to have to prove to your future employer that, yeah, this uh, application is definitely worthwhile uh, looking at in terms of interviews. Does that make it clearer, folks? Any more questions? Uh, regarding the design and development, I really like, uh, I'm guessing this is what you were talking about in the presentation. Mm. Yeah, I mean... Will, it, will this involve uh, talking about it, or would it be like the using of uh, graphs and stuff like that to convert my idea of why I'm, I'm collecting this data? <coughs> well, the earlier stages of the presentation, now you're talking about the requirement specification and a justification. So this might be some words, it might be a picture, whatever communicates most effectively. Remember, but do bear in mind that you put the presentation together in terms of the slides, but then you will be using the ability in PowerPoint to add your commentary. You must be adding a commentary. So remember the difference between what's on the screen and what you're, what you're saying in your voice, with your voice the story you tell with your voice. Um, and so you might want to put a small flow chart to demonstrate what you're doing, and then talk a bit about why this is why you use this approach, this step, this step, this step. Um, when's the submission date for this, the deadline? About the 4th of January, wasn't it, I think it said. So it tells you somewhere in here, I forget 4th what. 4th of January. Yeah, 4th of January, midnight. Where is the, uh, Somewhere, it says somewhere at the very top, I guess. We have feedback with all of them. Feedback, we have feedback. Well, it's, it's going to be, well, you've got some opportunity tomorrow in terms of the technical side. Uh, unfortunately, due to the, um, if we want to do it during the, that, that week, then we're probably not going to be able to have a quick review of your presentation this time around. 
but you know, but but you do know from other sessions we've had with me about feedback on the assignments, how to think about structuring your ideas and how to actually tell the story. So it's really a matter of taking it from your word written form, all the things that we've been telling you, uh, both about this module, the article, and the and the um, sustaining the information corporate governance. You know, you've got a lot of input there already about how to take your ideas and be very, very specific, rather than fuzzy and wide, but focus very, very much on the topic of what you're writing here. Uh, so uh, the first uh, part of the weighting, the requirement specification, this will be about, uh, just uh, to reflect on my work, not something I will say, right? It's like Okay, it's think about, you've done the technical project, you've found the data, you've decided which, bit, and then, uh, which bits of blue mix you're going to use, and maybe something else, Tableau perhaps is another way of visualizing some of it which you can't do in uh, maybe in blue mix. Then you've done the analysis, you've done some visualizations which give you those insights. And so you think about how do I Again, just like laying out an article, here's the question, make it clear what it is. In this instance, you're justifying it. Well, actually, with all of your assignments, you have to justify the topic, the narrow topic. And then you think about, okay, what's the technicalities? How did I approach those technicalities? So that's a section about, well, you've got really the titles here in a sense. So you lay those out step by step by step, and then you think about the inside of each of those major sections. What are the significant ones? So you might have one, uh, an introductory one for the overall context or special justification that's, that's a title page, and then you'll lay out two or three slides following that about each of these things. And then you think, then the next section is a design development implementation title page. We just you should flick up just briefly to say, I'm now moving on to cover this bit. And then you <coughs> might have three or four slides there. And you get just put the titles for those. And then you think about, do I need a little screenshot up in the right-hand corner or somewhere? <coughs> or do I just have a big screenshot? And then I'm going to talk for two minutes about that. Um, and then there's a, another title page. And then you've got four or five, a few slides on those four topics there. And then you lay those out now, and you then think, OK, how do I go about putting words, numbers, pictures, graphs, whatever, to actually cover that, 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 that? And remember, you've got 15 minutes, plus or minus one minute. So if you're going to speak for a minute for each slide, a maximum of 15 detailed slides. You might have three more for the subtitle pages or whatever. And um, one page at the very front is a title page, which is just there to show what's going on. Remember, title must reflect your project. So it is not the ITPD uh, uh, artifact, because otherwise we'll have 15 of those, and that's kind of not very helpful. Specifically, grab the attention right from the beginning with a, a title that reflects your project. In a way that's going to sell your project to me and to Dennis quickly. So basically it's just thinking, thinking of a problem, try to justify why you're approaching that problem, gather analytics for that specific problem, and try to reach a resolution. Yeah, uh, I mean basically, someone to order the resolution. I, I mean, it's going to be a bit of a chicken egg situation. It depends on whether you have a problem and then you go find the data, or you find some data and then work out what the problem is, and you've got the opportunity to do either either way. Um, one other thing I should mention, I've just recently launched with uh, a colleague from Birmingham City University and a few other colleagues around the world are now beginning to work on it with me, um, a new website called um, Big Data Analytics, Educational Resources and Research. And all of this, if you're interested to help um, by giving me the links to some interesting source of data, then they'll go on to this as uh, part of the resources, and uh, names will be added into the contributors' uh, web page or page within that website. So, as you over the next, well, for those who are going to stay through until the end of May or whenever, um, from now on, every interesting source 
um, or website you come across which has really cool data that's publicly accessible, do let me have um, so we can build this thing up as quickly as possible. Um, the idea is to provide resources for schools, for universities, um, particularly for those two levels, um, in all sorts of areas. I'll post up a link for you in a little bit so you can see where We've got a little bit done so far, not a lot, but we're just about to start building it and uh, your assistance and help will be much appreciated. And have a, have a little look through it to see where what's already there uh, in terms of ideas, because it's just laid out as about six pages with ideas. One area has got a couple of extra pages attached to it with some data links in it. but. Um, Really, the idea is to get as many sources as quickly as possible so it becomes valuable. And then it'll be more use easier for people next your people who follow you next year. Uh, they'll have a slightly easier uh, life, <coughs> perhaps. Or maybe they won't use those and they'll go somewhere else. We'll have to wait and see, but uh, I'd like help in terms of that as well. Anything else, guys? You have a good feel now for what you have to do. Okay. Excellent. Over to you, Dennis. Well, that's it, really. Okay, right here. <laughs>